Captain Kustav, to We Have the Power. Hello everyone, my name is Matthew and we'll be talking today about logs. I'd like to thank the buyers Alexander and Rob for creating such an event in these difficult times. Let's begin. Every now and then during my operations I need to save information for later. It may be a transcript of creating a new VM or with all the funky stuff. It also may be an update of a client's machine software or it may be a result of a maintenance check. I call all those information logs. We all love logs, especially when something breaks and we're looking for a debugging info. Let's talk about logs as a service solution today. Logs that are affordable, logs that are always available, and logs that you can easily create reports from, but logs that are not a SIAM system. We are used to logs that come in a variety of shapes. Some are more verbose than others, some gives us headaches, but we won't be talking about those kind of logs today. Instead, I'd like to talk with you about a more Palantir-like, all-knowing logs. These logs can be searched with simple yet very powerful queries. Output is user-friendly and they are fast, really, really fast. With little knowledge, you can build custom reports like these or dashboards for your team. All this you can create by yourself in under 15 minutes. Are you interested? Are you interested? What's on today's menu? I'll start with some basic information about Azure Monitor and Custer Query Language. Then we can begin working with Azure Log REST API, create our first Power BI report and an Azure dashboard. For those who like to keep the inbox clean, we'll look at the alert rules. The trivia, you know why Custa? The name is after a French naval officer and explorer. You know, blue, azure, clouds, logs, sea of data, naval explorer, Cousteau. Don't worry if you're not familiar with any of the mentioned topics. You don't need to master Azure Monitor or Log Analytics. Maybe you've never used a RESTful API. Also, don't worry if you hear of Power BI for the first time. We will cover all the information you will require. Why you may need all these? Information is really worth something only if we can use it. As I am one time engineer, I analyze and draw conclusions. Then I need to prepare it in an attractive way for others, maybe less familiar with the technology, in a way that they can get value out of it. It also would be nice not to get thousand mails a day of alerts. Too beautiful to be true? Add a pinch of PowerShell and automation and we can go for an adventure. What is Azure Monitor? I call it a helper. It offers a variety of functionalities that should meet our needs. Different sources can fit their data. We can build our own custom sources as well. We can consume this data with predefined solutions, prepare our own reports or analysis, run remediation actions, add events automatically, we can also integrate with other solutions APIs. Our information can be of two types, metrics or logs. Metrics are numeric values describing the state of a system in a given time. Logs are just custom objects with different properties, strings, numbers, booleans, or again, complete objects. We can read the already stored information with KQL, REST API, and mQuery. Some of you familiar with Excel will feel like home. A custom query is a read-only request to process data and return results. It's very alike as well. Just like PowerShell is the backbone for all our automation, and MS Graph is an API for Office and Azure services, KQL runs behind a lot of data-consuming services in Azure. I really encourage you to learn more if you plan to work with Microsoft Cloud Solutions. The query looks very simplified PowerShell where object query. Worth noting is that each pipe acts like a select object with defined set of objects. Only those are passed down the pipe. For each data type, log analytics adds a suffix depending on the data type. 
Also remember, tables are case sensitive. This query is quite simple. This is a bit more complicated. For example, I'm asking for records from past seven days from PGXAB custom log table. Then I'm aggregating the results by describe string and adding a more meaningful status based on a past Boolean value. Eventually, I'm sorting the results. This is an intermediate custom query. No need to go into details right now, but if you'd like to, you might try it as an exercise. Project keyword is an equivalent of select object. The result of a query can be a table, a bar chart, or any other chart, whatever you like. Based on those queries, we can also create a dashboard. Tiles will have our custom, quer custom queries. Each tile is clickable with additional information. If you like to share, Power BI is great for building reports. It can do a lot, but even a rookie like me can get some basic reporting out of it. Here is an Active Directory report from my Checks AD module. Here's a similar one for Windows Event Collector. These kind of reports can be very useful for your support or first line to go through your logs with an easy interface. On top of our custom queries, we can create alerts based on given conditions and thresholds with a specified target group, a service, or an application. We're almost done with the theory. You cannot add data through a GUI to Azure Logs. Microsoft gives samples for different languages. They even created a simple PowerShell module of it lately. It lacks some functionality though, and before they published their module, I created one Azure Log Tools. Its basic purpose is to get a PowerShell object, prepare it, make a JSON out of it with necessary additional fields and send it to Azure Logs. This is how it works. We mark the start and the end of our command at Azure Log Workspace and primary shared key to our instance. Define the table to which we want to insert the data and provide the object. When we want to retrieve the data, we can use Azure RM module to invoke our query. To do that, we need to register an application. At the dev.localanalytics.io website, you can find step-by-step -step instructions how to do that. Then we just run the invoke Azure RM operational insights query and get our results. If you will need to delete your data, for example, because of GDPR requirements, you will need to use REST API filters. There's no GUI option. Microsoft provides a document describing why and how. Because all of this, I'm not adding this functionality to my module currently. If you're testing and misplaced your data or change the type of data you're sending, you can set a short retention on this specific table. And once it's cleared, increase it again to the value you desire. This also can be very useful if you want to specific tables only to store longer period of time than your default retention policies. But what about PowerShell? Where does it fit? Let's see how it streamlines the whole process, starting with preparing the environment, sending and retrieving logs. Then we will have some fun with KQL. We will create our first Azure dashboard and look at how easily one can create a Power BI report. Okay, time for a demo. As I mentioned before, I've created a module, AL Tools, which is available on GitHub and in PowerShell Gallery. It helps with sending custom objects to Azure Logs. In the README, you will find all the necessary information like how to create Azure Log Workspace, how to retrieve ID and primary shared key, and some basic run examples to get you started. There are a few steps before you can use Azure Log Workspace, right? First, each machine that will be sending logs needs to use TLS 1.2. This also applies to installing any modules from PowerShell Gallery lately. So here are a few lines that will do the trick. Then you need to create log workspace. Here I will be creating a resource group in West Europe and a new workspace. First, let's connect to Azure with my Azure RAM account. This can take a second. 
Okay, here we go. Got it. Now, let's get all the subscriptions I have there and select the one that will be used to create the local workspace. Okay, let's use the log analytics one. Now we will be creating the resource group. And once it's created, we will create the log analytic workspace. Got it. Once you create the workspace, it won't be visible for you for about 30 minutes. For this reason, we will be using my demo workspace where I send daily pester checks, results, and we will see the logs from my test domain. Remember also that each time you send data, it, it can take up to five minutes before you can search them. Okay, let's connect to our workspace and get the necessary information. So first, again, let's get the subscription we will be using. Then the resource group we just created, PSCon 2020. This is the test one, but because we will be using my previously created, I'm selecting the log analytics one. Now get the workspace out there, the custom logs. And right now I will retrieve the shared key and the workspace. Using this and exporting to XML file allows me for further use that I can use in scripts, just import the XML file with the account and on the machine you've exported it and you can quite securely save the password. And if you need later, just use the import CLI XML. Okay, let's start with something simple. Send all the processes that are currently running on my machine. As you can see, I'm importing the necessary information from the file. This file holds the workspace ID, the primary shared key that I'll be using to get my data to Azure Logs. And I'm using Splat because I will be using for this tutorial, uh, for this data not to mess with currently already stored information there, I will be using a PSCon 2020 demo Azure Log table. As you can see, I have 285 processes running on my machine right now. They will be sent to this workspace ID with a batch ID going like this. For if I would need to search for all the data sent in a single batch, this will be helpful. Also, all the information will be stored to PSCon 2020 demo table. And it's there. To have more data to work with right now for the demo purpose, I'll get some VM inventory details from my test environment, like VM name, memory, disk details, and so on. For this, I created a basic VM inventory function that enumerates through all the VMs, get the disk size, network adapters, VLAN IDs, and creates a custom object with some basic information. So let's load it into memory. Because I'll be connecting to my Hyper-V host, I need to use a different credentials I'm running right now. Let's mark the beginning and the end of the command. And let's query my thv6 host for all the VMs that it currently hosts. Once I have the information, 
as before I will use the psconf key table uh, to to send the workspace ID and the workspace password this time I will be sending all the information to VM inventory table so we've got the VM details now let's send them to Azure as you can see there were 26 VMs and the information should be there in a few moments to talk to Azure Log REST API you will need an authentication token we will use an Azure AD application I've created before with all the necessary information like uh, permissions and assignments to do that and how to do that the DevLog Analytics IO web page which is basically a talk for REST API of Log Analytics you can get a tutorial how to obtain the authentication token in here you will get step by step how to register Azure AD application how to assign permissions and how to link it to your current workspace that you need to use let's get back to the demo so I will use the credentials and the message for this purpose I've already exported the information to the path in here so let's import it let's log in to our account using the application ID as you can see this time I didn't use my account I used the Azure ID application this is a simple query let's check the custom log table pgx AB for all the logs that were gener generated for the past 30 days with the checks passed and failed using the host here string I'm passing that into invoke operational insight query all the results will be stored here and here they are as you can see this is not a array of objects so getting through the information this is just a simple ps custom objects with three properties that I queried for check pass check fail and describe so to <coughs> sorry sorry so to get the results for example we would like to we need to explicitly ask using the where object which is not very comfy uh, second sample let's get all the checks and mark them join them with the failed and passed so a little bit more complicated query and as you can see there are a lot of results which again this is not an RI that we can check in here but we will get as a zero the same RI using the REST API to get the queries from this module requires a lot of manual work to get the specific object you would require for let's stop this madness so let's see whether we've got any information already so tell me anything that was sent past 15 minutes for the VM inventory should we get any results yes we do so the logs we just sent are already there available for us to click through or create any reports so if PowerShell or this module is not quite good for getting any REST API information how to do that better well for the first we can go to Azure portal I already created some queries to work with our data as you can see we have the custom logs table in here with all additional tables we already created like VM inventory we will be using right now like VETS logs I'm sending all my Windows event collector logs PGXAD or any other contrast or meetups so querying the VM inventory will get us by default all the data for the past 24 hours if you would like to narrow it we can use the time generated between syntax in here I will get I, I'd like to get only machines which belong to VLAN 101 and tell me project so a simple select object only the name the network IP address and the number of disks the VM contain and sort it 
go away. As you can see, I got seven records from a lot from within the table under one second. Okay, this is the basic information. If you would like to get some charts, like for example, current disk usage, we can just render bar chart and the information will be already present in a visual form. Uh, the same query we run using the REST API. So tell me all my active uh, and past and failed checks. Also extend the information that are already there in the table with how long ago with hours with a simple uh, math function. So I, will, I know that my check that was verifying whether the DHCP server is properly configured run not that far away. Same for past and failed checks. Yay, I have zero past checks for my backup. This is a test domain, Arkham test, and I have quite a significant number of other past checks. So we can see my Azure log is being used quite extensively for a small environment. So what about the cost? Because I'm using the free tier, as you can see, and I'm sending some data, it will cost me this month below one euro. But how the magic works? Underneath all this, there's the write log, write to log analytics function that gets the number of properties we already, the parameters we already talked about. It creates a GUID at first, this is a requirement from Azure Log. Then it converts the object using uh, convert to and from JSON. This is to avoid an issue I run when I run the same query two times. For example, I want to send the same information two times. If I would run this right now, the production module will complain that it cannot stop. It cannot add member because the object already has. If you do a simple, if you do a simple uh, statement like this, it will not copy the object. It will just reference to the same in memory. So this generates the issue that you currently see in here that it cannot add a member to object because the member is already there. So in a dev environment, to avoid this, I'm using the flat conversion to JSON and then convert back to, to the object, which gives me a genuine object every time this function is run. Then I'm adding all the, sorry, node properties for the object and using splat, sending it to export. While export is just Microsoft example with some basic formatting fixing because it was hardly readable but very same example can be found in Microsoft module or on the docs side. All I did was just create it a little bit and it using the get log analytics signature function which is a private one which is just a basic copy paste from Microsoft docs to generate the authentication token to send to API. So as you can see nothing fancy Everything is around creating an object, making JSON out of it uh, with the export function, adding all the information, all the tokens required to send the data, and that's it. But instead of typing every time the same function to each of my modules that will be sending that out to log, I can use this micro module to, to do it for me. Okay, we've seen how it works. We've sent our first data to Azure Log with the VM inventory. We've seen the magic behind it. It would be right now time to create our first Azure dashboard. So let's head back to our log analytics. To create a dashboard, you need to go to View Designer first. It will change soon to Workbook, Workbooks. But currently, to create one, you can select from a basic uh, headlines first or we can import already created
created. So if you want to share your dashboard, you can just export import or store it in your GitHub for uh, emergencies. For now, we will use a donut one. So for example, let's start with getting, let's say all the VMs and the VLANs they belong to. I've prepared the code before. You will need a query, just like Gusta query, with specific syntax. So we will get all the information, aggregate it, or aggregate all the information from access VLAN ID and order by the value. What this will do, if put in the query one, it will check what VLAN IDs are being right now used. VMs with VLAN IDs. Okay, now this is just a tile, a heading tile for our data. So let's go to go to view dashboard and select a donut with list. Looks nice. Now we will need to put a title in here. Number of VMs connected to each VLAN. Then again the query from the first window. As you can see, it created the same data as before. And now to get the list of the queries, we can add it in here. VLAN ID. So now we know what VLAN ID we have. This is null, 0, 103, 102, 205. Let's save it. Once we save it, it will be pinned to our dashboard. As you can see, uh, let's go to custom logs and workspace summar summary for a better view. As you can see, I have already pinned some dashboards like accounts enabled and disabled from our test domain, number of accounts of computers that changed recently in the past 24 hours. We can easily navigate to a different timetable. I can see how many logs were cleared from the security and the system logs, whether any password changed in the past 30 minutes and how many master check failed, what check failed, what check passed in the system and do I need to update my machine? Oh, I need to update one machine. That's good. And let's go to our VMs with VLAN IDs we created just now. So once I click this, I again have the mm, time selector in here. I can get only past 30 minutes and it will give me the same data because I have the same VMs. But once I click in here, it will go to log analytics and select this specific query. For example, give me all the, because I clicked on the 101, it will give me only the VMs with, which belong to access VLAN 101 and the information from the like, all the information that the table has, like the IP address, uh, what the vSwitch is connected to, on which computer it is, what is the memory minimum maximum. Right now I can work with the data. So as a front page, a front end or an easy log searchable, dashboards are quite good for your support. They can just click and get the data. And for those more advanced, they can work from here. Okay, what about some alerting? We cannot put a threshold on a search field, so we will have to use a different query. I have something already saved. For example, we can use a filter to get any Active Directory group changes from the Windows Event Collector. Let's clear all this. What happens if I run this query? Well, it will get my test domain and tell me any changes to Active Directory groups, who created, who processed the change, what group was affected, what member changed, what was the action. In this action, in this particular event, it was removed. So apparently, administrator removed Bastila Shan from the test group 181LDP. So let's create an alert rule for this. We click in here. Then we are being transferred to a new wizard. As you can see, it states that the alert will cost 150 
but it doesn't mean it will cost 150 for each trigger. It will be the same cost whether it will be triggered one time, two times or 100 times a day. The cost is the same. We need to put a threshold in here. So when should we be notified? As you can see, it already queries the data to show you how many events were before to get you uh, a good view how often you will be notified, which is quite a good thing. It has the same query we had in the, uh, in the wizard out there. So based on the number of results that will be greater than, for example, if we have 450, let's say we assume this is our average number, so let's say about 500 in the last 24 hours, it will check every five minutes. So if by any reason I will have more than 500 group changes in 24 hours, I will be notified. But how? You can select the action group. I have already prepared the email admins. So once this trigger will happen, my teams will get a notification that something's bad going on. Now we need to put the alert rule, so above 500 changes and create the alert rule. It takes a second and it's done. Because when you select the threshold, uh, you can see how many of these events were generated in the past. It allows you to get the number you need and not be flooded with the alerts. So once we're done with the alerts, let's get back to Power BI. Yay, let's go back. So we go to any, any query, in fact. Let's go to logs. For example, I want to get all the data from my newly created VM inventory custom log table. Any events. Just everything at all. You can also narrow if you'd like to. For me, I'd like to get all the data without narrowing in the query here. What I need to do is to create the export and export to Power BI and query. It gets me the text file, which explains where and how should I pass the content. So let's copy the content, open our new Power BI. Okay, let's click on the get data. Yay, not responding. Okay, we get the we should get to the we should click on the get data and get the blank query as it states in the file in here. Go to the once it's open. Go to the advanced editor, which is located in here. Let it load. And then pass the content we have in here. One thing to know, by default, it has the time span past one day filled in. So we need to fix that if we want to have more data let's say past seven days. And once we click done, it will ask us for credentials to this specific workspace ID. So I need to log in using my organizational account, but I need to use a different account that I'm currently using. So let's click sign in as a different user, select my Arcan account, my password and click connect. After a few moments, we will get all the queries. We click close and apply. Still loading the background. Hold on. It's creating the connection model. So using D 
the M query, which is the same as in Excel, uh, it gets using the REST API all the content of the VM inventory custom log table. As you can see, it's loaded 100 rows approximately and should allow me to choose from the fields in here. As you can see, I have all the same tables I had in Azure Log Analytics. So let's start with something simple. Let's create a text box. This is a basic report. We can adjust the font, the size to create it more visually attractive. For now, it should be enough. Then we can get the fields we need. So create a table with, for example, computer name, dynamic memory, disk memory, some of the disk count, maybe the uptime hour. What else? What else? We can get some name of the VM number of the processor count, that should, that should be enough for now, for now. So we've got a basic table. Now we can create, for example, a slicer. To this slicer, we can add name. Because it's a list, we can change it to a dropdown and move it to the top. We can also in here say we want to allow only multi-selective control and allow for multi-selection. So now when I click in here, I can, for example, give me all the details for these two machines. And voila. Now, if you want to pass the data, to your co-workers, to your manager, to your third-line support. They don't need to know how to log in to Portal Azure and write custom queries. They don't need to know what Azure Portal is in the first place. You can create rich and very uh, informative visuals on the data you already have. So this is basically it. We've covered how to send information to Log Analytics, how to create Azure dashboards, alerts, how to write basic queries and how to create a dashboard. Let's go back to our presentation. Okay. So <laughs> how much does it cost? The cost is per gigabyte of data. Getting and storing the data costs, but remember the free tier. So the ingestion acquiring of first five gigabytes of data per month is free. And the retention for the acquired data for the first month is also free. So let's get an example. We got 10 servers with custom logs that we want to send to Azure every day. Let's say it's an output of your internal checklists results of scheduled tasks, maybe some access logs of an old legacy payroll system. There's 30 megabytes of those logs from each of those 10 servers every day. And we want to store the data for example, three months. When doing the math, remember about the free tier every month. So each month we pay for the ingest of fresh data and we do not pay for additional retention of this newly data stored. Then we pay for storing the accumulated data across three months. And this is a whopping 30, 13 euros per month or 156 euro per year. So time to wrap it up. Azure logs are not very expensive for custom logs because it's a service. We do not need to maintain it. If needed, we can just use a slider to increase the retention time, but it comes with no predefined queries with Power BI and Azure Dashboards, 
building those queries is not that hard. Remember, this solution, a custom Azure log table, is not a CM replacement, it's not an ELK replacement, it's also not a fancy SQL database. This is just Yeti, yet another tool incorporated. Sorry, I had to. So all the slides and code will be available in the psconf git repository. If you'd like to ask me any questions, you can find me during the online event of psconf EU 2020 or reach me out via Twitter, mail or GitHub. Thank you for joining me and have a great time watching all the other awesome sessions.